everyone. I tried making a noodle soup using green curry as the base for this cold weather in New York, and it turned out pretty good. This is by no means authentic, but it tastes pretty good, and I think that's what matters. So apparently a lot of my viewers aren't subscribed, so if you've been enjoying my cooking content, leave a like and subscribe. Only takes a second, so without further ado. All right, so I forgot to record me soaking the kombu, but I just wanna show this clip to soak 10 grams of kombu with one liter of water for at least an hour or best overnight before starting to make this. For this soup, I'm gonna cut up some squash, peppers, broccoli, bamboo, and chicken thighs. You can use whatever veggies you want as this is a freestyle recipe anyway, and it just so happens that I had some leftover squash and peppers lying around. So this is how I like to cut up the squash. I cut it in half and then I flip it over on the flat side and I start cutting them into flat medallions. For this soup, I used up two squashes. I'm also gonna cut up two peppers as well. Instead of cutting them into julienne slices, I'm gonna cut them into like squarish pieces. For the broccoli, I'm gonna cut off the stem first and then cut them into bite-sized chunks before trying to get the florets into a similar size as well. Here I have some vacuum sealed bamboo. I prefer these over the canned ones because the smell is definitely not as bad, but if you only have access to the canned ones, just use those then, or just cut it out completely. Give it a good rinse to rinse out all of the brine water that it's being soaked in while it's in the vacuum seal or in the can if you're using that, and then cut them into slices. With all the veggie prep done, we can finally start on our chicken thighs. We just wanna cut them up into pretty much bite-sized pieces, and then we're gonna sear these later. Now we're gonna season our chicken thighs real quick with some salt and pepper, then proceed to place it in a pot under medium high heat so we can sear the thighs and develop some color and fawn. By the time your chicken thighs have developed some good color and there's a lot of fawn on the bottom, it's time to add in your green curry paste. These are readily available in New York City and supposedly it's a pain in the ass to make from scratch so I usually just opt for the pre-made ones. It's pretty good and not even expensive at all, lasts a long time as well. I like to add in three tablespoons, that's my preference, and if you like it more spicy, add more, and if not, vice versa for less. We want to cook the paste a bit so it develops some extra fun before we finally add in our chicken stock. I only had one can available, which is why I opted for some soaked kombu. Uh, I didn't feel like running to the store because it was freezing outside, so use what you have, I guess. But obviously you can opt in for more chicken stock or skip the kombu completely. Remember to scrape all the fawn on the bottom and after it's all deglazed, add in your kombu if you decide to use it. Give everything a good mix and now we're gonna add in the coconut milk. I was testing to see if half a can was strong enough, but after tasting it near the end, just add the full can. The flavor's way better that way. I ended up adding another half a can near the end anyway, so you can always just do it now. Also, the reason the coconut milk looks thick and solid is because pricier coconut milk actually contains more fat, which leads to it being more solid. It'll eventually turn into liquid once you heat it up, so no worries. As per usual, when it starts simmering, take out the kombu. We're gonna add in our squash now. Cover and let this come up to a boil before reducing it to a simmer for five minutes. Once it's simmering, let it simmer for five minutes for the squash. Then we're gonna add in our peppers and broccoli and cook it for another five minutes. Finally, we're gonna add in our bamboo shoots cause this cooks really quickly. And the reason we do it all in this order is because the amount of time for each vegetable differs. So I place the one that cooks the longest first, although these are generally pretty quick vegetables to cook all together. Finally, we're gonna season at the very end with some fish sauce. Fish sauce is something you'll see in a lot in Vietnamese and Thai cooking, and it smells a little funky, but oh man, it enhances the taste of many dishes easily with that umami. So we're gonna add in one tablespoon at first because you can always add in more if not salty enough. Also, we're gonna add in the juice of one whole lime as well. This is gonna add that needed acidity and also brightens up the dish. I forgot to record footage, but I also added in a tablespoon of brown sugar. Normally, we would use palm sugar if we're making something more traditional, but I didn't have any on hand, so brown sugar should work fine. Taste your soup to make sure everything is to your liking, and once done, turn off the heat and start to tear in some basil leaves. This is Chinese basil as it's quite difficult and expensive to get a hold of Thai basil. 
Thai basil is also known as holy basil and its flavor is amazing, but I used what was available to me. Don't feel pressured to make everything traditional. I mean, if you can, great. If not, it's okay. You just want to make some tasty food. It's also not like I advertise this as a traditional green curry either. Here I have a bowl of rice noodles that I prepared by soaking them in some boiling water. I drain out the water and now all you have to do is scoop out the soup, some chicken and vegetables, and there you have it. There's a the meal itself. Hope you all give this a try as this meal is quite comforting in the winter and simple to make as well. Hey everyone, thanks for watching my video and if you enjoyed it, please like and subscribe and follow my Instagram at WeCanCooks. Shout out to my man Tommy for creating this outro for me.